Hi, boys and girls. Guess what? I can give you another special greeting, not just hi, but happy Sabbath too. I'm so glad you came to Carolina Camp Meeting for Kids. And I have another friend with me, and her name is Minnie. Minnie is here. Minnie, can you say hi to the kids? Hey, y'all. Hey, I'm glad you could say be with me today too and say hi to the kids. You know, I forgot something yesterday, and that was to tell about how important it is for us to love our enemies. Really? Yes, God told us, Jesus told us to love our enemies. Can you believe that? No. But do you know what? That's what Jesus did for us. He loved us so much, He came down here even when we were sinners to die for us. So we can be thankful that Jesus loves us so much. Oh, yes. Well, you know what? We're getting ready to talk about one other thing, and that is that we need to love others just as Jesus loved us. So today, let's love one another, shall we? Okay. Welcome, y'all. God wants me to love him first. God wants me to love my neighbor. God wants me to be a friend by showing love. I'm doing God's will. God wants me to cheer the sad. God wants me to feed the hungry. God wants me to help the poor by serving Him. I'm doing God's will. God wants me to do justly. God wants me to love mercy. God wants me to walk with Him by following Him. I'm doing God's will. By following Him, I'm doing God's will. Yeah, that's it, Tony. Let's learn more about it, shall we? Let's bow our heads for a word to talk to Jesus, shall we, this morning? Dear Jesus, we want to thank you that we can come and talk to you, and that even though we are sinners and we need to be forgiven, you have already done that for us. You loved us so much, you came here to this earth for us. So dear Jesus, help us to love you, help us to love others, and Lord, help us to learn more about you today and learn to do your will. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, boys and girls, let's see if you can do the whole memory verse again. This is a long one, so let's see if you can do it. We'll go slowly and we'll do it two or three times just to get it in our minds. And I hope you won't stop saying it now, but you'll keep saying it every day and learn more memory verses like this. Because do you know, it's when we read God's Word, that's where we can learn more. When we read the Bible, we can learn how to do God's will. All right, ready? Make your C and let's seek. Ready? Seek God's will in all you do and He will show you what path to take. Proverbs 3, 6. Let's do it again. Seek God's will in all you do and He will show you what path to take. Proverbs 3, 6. Let's do it one last time together, shall we? Seek God's will in all you do and He will show you what path to take. Proverbs 3, 6. Boys and girls, I hope that after this week, you will continue to be looking, seeking for God's will in everything you do. And when you do that, He will show you the way to go, the path to take, because He has a very special plan for your life. Hope you have a good Sabbath and enjoy our Sabbath program. Noah in the Big Boat in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God took six days to create light, 
to separate the water from the air, to make the dry land appear and produce trees, bushes, and plants, to make the sun, moon, and stars, to speak the birds of the air and fish in the waters into existence, to make all the land animals, and finally he got down on his knees and formed Adam and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. God planted a garden of, in Eden, and that is where he placed Adam to take care of it and watch over it. And God planted all sorts of trees that produced delicious fruit. In the middle of the garden, he placed two special trees, the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God told Adam that he could eat fruit from any tree in his garden of Eden home, except for one. He warned Adam that he should not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, or he would surely die. Next, God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper who is just right for him. So God formed animals and birds from the sky and brought them to Adam to see what he would name them. Still, there was no helper for Adam. So God caused him to fall into a deep sleep, and while he slept, God made a special gift for Adam out of one of Adam's ribs. God made Eve. He gave Adam and Eve a special covering of light for their clothes. Then God rested on the Sabbath day from all that he had created and celebrated all that he had made. One day, Eve wandered over near the tree that she should have stayed away from. Satan, disguised as a beautiful serpent, sat up in the forbidden tree and lied to Eve, making her question God's warning to her and to Adam. Eve believed Satan's lies and disobeyed God by taking and eating the fruit from the tree from which God had told her not to eat. Not only did she eat of it, but she gave some to Adam and encouraged him to eat too. That's when sin came into God's perfect world. All of a sudden, the covering of light with which Adam and Eve were clothed disappeared. They felt embarrassed and sewed fig leaves together to cover themselves. Adam and Eve heard God's footsteps in the garden as he came to walk with them in the cool evening breeze. They hid in fear of God. When God called to Adam, Where are you? Adam and Eve admitted the awful truth about what they had done, with Eve blaming the serpent and Adam blaming Eve. Though God made Adam and Eve coverings of animal skins and sent them away from their Garden of Eden home, it was not without the promise of a Redeemer who would one day save them from sin and bring them back to their Eden home. Adam and Eve had sons in due time. The first son was named Cain, and then they had Abel. As Cain grew up, he became a farmer cultivating crops. Abel was a shepherd who took care of sheep. One day, instead of bringing a lamb to sacrifice to God for his sins, Cain brought some of his crops as a gift. Cain was not interested in being obedient and doing God's will, nor did he feel the need of bringing a sacrifice for his sins. God did not accept Cain's gift. However, Abel brought the best of the firstborn lambs of his flock, and God accepted Abel's gift. Cain became angry and jealous that Abel's gift to God was accepted, but his gift was not accepted. One day, Cain said to Abel, Let's go out into the fields. While they were there, Cain killed Abel. When God asked Cain where Abel was, Cain said, I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? But God knew what Cain had done, and he cursed Cain and sent him away to wander through the earth. After Cain left, Adam and Eve had another son, and they named him Seth. When Seth grew up, he taught his children to worship God. But his older brother Cain lived for a long time and taught many of his descendants to turn away from God. As God looked down and saw that everything people thought of or imagined was evil, he was very sorry that he had ever made them and put them on the earth. In fact, it broke his heart. It was then that God decided to wipe the human race that he created from the face of the earth. He decided to destroy every living thing, all the people, large and small animals, even the birds of the sky. He said, I'm sorry I ever made them. But there was a man named Noah who had three sons named Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Noah found favor with the Lord. He was different from other people. He was a close friend of God. He loved God and wanted to do his will. In fact, Noah was the only blameless person living on earth. No. <laughs>
Noah was a righteous man. Noah was God's friend. Noah walked and talked with God and heard God speak to him. One day, God said to Noah, I have decided to destroy all living creatures, for they have filled the earth with violence. Yes, I will wipe them all out along with the earth. Then God proceeded to tell Noah to build a big boat from gopher wood and make it waterproof with tar inside and outside the boat. God gave Noah specific directions about how long and how wide and how high to build the big boat. Then he said, I'm about to cover the earth with a flood and destroy every living thing that breathes. But I want you and your wife and your sons and their wives to go into the boat. Bring a pair of every kind of animal, male and female, into the boat, and be sure to bring enough food for your family and for the animals. So Noah did exactly what God told him to do. Noah was obedient, he listened as God said. Noah built a great big boat to save those who'll be spared. Noah chose to do God's will, he listened to God's plan. Noah set to work to build a boat just as God said. Noah and his sons, all three, hired some men to help. They cut down some lofty trees down in the forest green. meadow near the woods of big trees, Noah and his three sons and the workmen hauled the big logs to be sawed into boards and made smooth and shaped to build the big boat. The workmen sawed and they sawed and they sawed and they sawed and they sawed some great big logs. They sawed and they sawed sawed and they sawed and made a huge stock of boards. Oof, these are so heavy. After the boards were cut, Noah and his sons and the workmen put some boards together to make the frame of the boat. Then it was time to hammer other boards together to make the sturdy sides of the big boat. As the big boat started to take shape, people heard about it and came from miles around to see it. Noah wanted to tell everyone about the big flood that was coming. He wanted to save as many people in the boat as possible. So while the work was going on, Noah stood and spoke to the people. He told them that because the world was such a wicked place, that God was sorry he had made it. Noah told the people that God was going to send rain to make a flood that would wipe every living thing from the face of the earth. Then Noah preached and preached and preached and preached and Noah warned of the flood. He preached and preached and preached and preached for he wanted to save the Come. But the people had never seen rain fall from the sky before. Up until that time, the earth was watered by the dew. They didn't believe that rain would fall and make a flood to wipe out every living thing. They thought it was silly for Noah to build such a big boat far away from water. The people made fun of Noah. They laughed and laughed at Noah and what he said. Laughed and 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 laughed
and left and nose big boat. They left and left and left and left and left it at Noah's big boat. <laughs> Noah and his sons and the workmen made many rooms and built cages inside the boat for the animals that were going to be in the boat. It took many years to complete the big boat, but finally everything was finished. So Noah and his wife, their three sons and their wives, began to bring all kinds of food for themselves and for the animals into the boat. They brought water. They packed clothes, containers, tools, and things they would need for the trip and brought them into the boat. The people continued to laugh and make fun of Noah and his family. Yet Noah stopped to remind the people once again that a flood was coming to clean the earth. He invited them to come into the boat and be saved. One day, the people came to see what Noah and his family were doing. As they stood by the big boat, someone pointed down the road and said, Look! The people turned and saw dust rising in the distance. They could hear the noises of animals. Animals were coming down the road. Many were coming two by two, and some even came seven by seven. They came male and female of every kind of animal. They came walking in an orderly fashion, as if they were being led by someone. There was no visible guide, but God was leading them into the big boat. The animals came two by two, two by two, two by two. The animals came two by two into the boat. Some animals came seven by seven, seven by seven, seven by seven. Some animals came seven by seven, birds, sheep, and goats. After the animals came into the big boat, Noah came one last time to invite the people to come into the big boat and be saved. He begged and pleaded with them, but the people listened and made fun of him. Not one of them came in, not even the workmen who had helped to build the big boat. The people stood outside the boat as Noah spoke to them. He said, now please won't you come in before the raindrops fall. The people laughed and shook their heads. No, no, we won't come in, for there has never been a flood, and there won't be one right now. Not one of all the people came, though Noah surely asked. Noah and his family went in the ark at last. Then God came down and shut the door so no one could come in. And Noah and his family waited for the rain to begin. One day, two days, three days, four days, five days, six days, seven days. Then the rains came down and the floods came up and the waters rose higher and higher. For forty days the raindrops fell and covered the highest mountain. For forty days and nights it rained and the underground springs burst forth. The water under the big boat grew deeper, lifting the boat high above the earth. But in spite of the flood, the big boat floated safely on the surface of the water because God was watching over it. After every living thing on the earth was destroyed, the rain stopped and the underground water stopped flowing. But the water covered the earth for five months. Then God sent a wind to dry up the waters and the big boat came to rest in the mountains of Ararat. Two and a half more months went by and the mountains were seen. After another 40 days, Noah opened a window and let a raven fly out. But the raven flew back and forth until the water had dried up. Noah also sent a dove to see if the water had gone down enough for it to find dry land. 
but it returned to Noah because it could not find a dry place to land. Seven more days went by, and when the dove was released, it returned to him in the evening with an olive leaf. Seven more days went by, and this time when Noah let the dove out of the window, it did not return. Finally, after over a year inside the big boat, Noah saw that at last the ground was dry, and God said to Noah and his family, Leave the boat, all of you. Release the animals so they may be fruitful and multiply throughout the earth. So Noah, his wife, his sons, and their wives left the big boat, and all the animals and birds came out of the boat too. Noah built an altar to the Lord, and he sacrificed a burnt offering. And God said, I will never again curse the ground because of the human race. I will never again destroy all living things. As long as the earth remains, there will be planting and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night. Then God blessed Noah and his sons and told them, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth. I have placed all animals in your power. Finally, God made a promise to Noah and his sons to place a rainbow in the sky as a sign that he would never again send floodwaters to kill all living creatures or destroy the earth. A beautiful rainbow appeared in the sky. placed a rainbow in the sky and promised when the rain clouds came he'd never send a great big flood to cover the whole world again god paints the rainbow in the sky a sign of beauty love from him he still says when the rain clouds come, I won't cover the world again. This is the story of Noah, a man who found favor with God because he was God's friend and wanted to do God's will. God saved him and his family from destruction, and they went out into the world to once again live in the earth and fill it with people, as God had told them to do. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord, and he landed high and dry. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord, and he landed high and dry. And now it's time for our offering. So today, our last uh, project from ADRA is about wells. Everyone needs water. I know right now, I feel thirsty. How about you? When it gets warm, I want to drink. Well, you can help dig a well. In many countries, kids don't have clean water to drink. Imagine that and how that would be, but that's true. And I know because I've watched adults and children carry big yellow five-gallon jugs for long distances to get clean water to drink or use in their cooking and to keep clean. Sometimes these people have to dig in the ground for hours to find enough water to fill one bucket. In other places, kids have to drink dirty river water. Yuck! And it often makes them sick. You can be the hero who gives other kids clean drinking water so they can stay healthy and hydrated. Today is our last day to remind you to give to our camp meeting for kids ADRA mission project offering. God has given each one of us so many blessings, including clean water to drink. Let us be quick to bless his children around the world by giving to our neighbors in need. Please go to www.adra.org to find the gift the kids gift catalog and thank you kids for doing God's will.
Hi boys and girls, I'm Miss Courtney and this is Eden and we're back today to talk about bees. Bees and honey. What do you know about bees? They eat honey. Yeah, they make honey and they also eat it too, huh? Do you know that bees are very social and they like to hang around with other bees? And they live in honeycomb structured structures called hives. And the hives are used to store honey and eggs laid by the queen bee. And did you know that there may be as many as 50,000 bees in a hive? No. That's a lot of bees, huh? Bees are important because they help pollinate plants that supply humans with fruits, grains, and vegetables. And how do they pollinate the plants? Do you know? They come over to the flowers, come over to the flowers, and then they get the nectar, and then the pollen from the flowers get on the bees. And then when the bees go to another plant, that pollen goes onto the other plant and pollinates it and makes the plants grow. Isn't that cool how the bees mm -hmm. do that? And it's all while they're collecting nectar so that they can make honey. The bee is the only insect that makes honey. And it's a food that we eat. Do you like honey? Yeah. What's the, your favorite way to eat honey? On a spoon. On a spoon. That's a good way. It's really good on cornbread. We had some on cornbread last night with toast. And I like it on peanut butter sometimes too, on toast. That's <laughs> yummy. The bee, they also, the beeswax is used to make candles. Queen bees are females who live for the purpose of making eggs. The queen bee body is longer with a longer abdomen. So this part here is longer than the other bees. They have a stinger too. This guy doesn't have a stinger, but if he did, it would be right about here. But unlike worker bees who die as a result of stinging an enemy, they may use their stinger multiple times and not die. So the queen bee could sting lots of different people and never die. But if a bee feels threatened, he'll lay on you and he'll sting you. And then do you know what happens to him? He dies. So he doesn't want to sting anybody because that's what happens if and he stings then, somebody. And then you have a bump. Yeah, and then you have a bump and it itches and it hurts and it, it does hurt. I've been stung by lots of bees. Do you know that my daddy, Pa, always had beehives when I was growing up? We always had beehives. And so he would get the honey out and it would come with the honeycomb and we would get to chew the wax and get all the honey out and then spit the wax out because you don't want to eat the wax because that's yucky. And I remember we had a swimming pool in our backyard and the bees like to be around water because they use the water to make the honey because they need water to drink, right? Yeah. And I remember a bee got stuck in my hair and all I could hear was a bzzz and I would run across the yard trying to get him to get out. And he was stuck and stuck and I did finally get him out. He didn't sting me, but I got stung lots of times in our backyard because of the bees. That's kind of scary, huh? <laughs> we just have to watch out when we're walking because they don't want to bother us. As long as we don't bother them, they won't bother us. Drone bees are another type of bees that are in the beehive, and they're males who mate with the queen bee, and they do not have a stinger, so the drone bees don't have a stinger. They can't sting you. And the worker bees are females who build and maintain the nests using wax secreted from glands in their abdomen. So they have glands in their bodies that make wax. They feed and care for the larvae produced from the eggs of the queen bee. The worker bees protect the nests by stinging their animals in, or their enemies in fear or anger. So that's the only time that they'll sting. Once the stinger is left in an enemy, they die because a hole is made in their own abdomen when they try to pull the stinger out. The worker bees gather nectar. So the worker bees are the ones that fly and they get the nectar from the plants. They get it with their long tongues. I don't see a tongue on this guy, but can you imagine a long tongue going into the flower to get the nectar? I bet they like that, huh? And the pollen is collected in pollen baskets on their legs. So this guy doesn't have any legs on the back, but there's little baskets that collect the pollen from the plants. And they bring it back to the hive to be converted to honey and placed in the six-sided cells of the hive. 
Worker bees travel as far as a mile to find pollen and nectar. When they find a source of nectar, they perform a bee dance. Is that silly? Can you make him dance? Yeah. And then that's kind of like gives directions to the other worker bees so they know where to find the nectar. So the bees will find where they found, they find some really good yummy nectar. And they're like, oof, I like that nectar. And so they go back to their hive and what do they do? They dance. They dance. They stand right on the side, right in the front. So the other bees can see them and they dance around. I've seen them. They look really funny. But they're so smart. God made them so smart to be able to do that, huh? So in Bible times, an Old Testament example of honey mentioned in the Bible is that God told the Israelites he would lead them to a land flowing with milk and honey. That's right. And do you know what that means? That it was a good land. Do you think it was a good land with milk and honey? Yeah. Yeah, I think so too. On the way to the promised land, do you know what God provided for his people to eat? Honey. Hmm, manna. Manna. And manna fell from the sky. It says it was a flaky substance as fine as frost. And that it tasted like wafers made with honey and was white like coriander seed. In the New Testament, John the Baptist ate locusts with wild honey. And I don't know about the locust part because that's like a big grasshopper and I don't want to eat a grasshopper. But the honey I can get into. Would you like to eat that? Yes. Yes. Psalms 19.10 refers to God's law as sweeter than honey, even honey dripping from the comb. And Psalms 119.103 says of God, How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. That's right. King Solomon told us how we should speak to one another. Gracious words are a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. bones. All right, that's what we have for you on Bees today. All right, happy Sabbath, boys and girls. I'm Miss Courtney, and this is Eden, and we have a special Sabbath dessert for you today. We are going to make a rainbow fruit dessert. Are you excited, Eden? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to put our fruit in the shape of a rainbow, in the order of the colors of a rainbow. So what color comes first? Red. Red. All right. So we're going to put it in the plate in the shape of a rainbow. Okay. Nice. All right. So what's next? Orange. Orange. Okay. Yep. We might run out of space too, but that's okay because that's delicious. <laughs> Which is your favorite fruit? Apples. Apples. It would be a hard choice to decide which one of these I like best. Orange is up here. Okay. So what color comes next? Yellow. Yellow. That's right. And there's lots of different fruits that you can use in the place of the fruit that we chose. And we don't have a green today, but we have all the rest. So for green, you could use kiwi or grapes or even pears. Good job. All right. So what comes next? Blue. Blue. So we can spread these out a little bit, scooch them together some more so you have some space. There you go. So I'll put the blueberries in there. You are doing a great job. This looks delicious. I can't wait to eat it. <laughs> are you excited? Yeah. Yeah. I love fruit too. Almost all fruit, huh? Pretty yummy. All right. So we got blueberries, and then what color comes next after the blueberries? We're gonna have the red grapes. Yep. Good job. I like grapes. Grapes are yummy. Me too. Mm -hmm. There's none of us. That's okay. So some of them. It's okay. It's going to be just right. And then the, for the last one, we have blackberries, which is kind of like violet. Do you like blackberries, mommy? I do like blackberries. And you can have the blackberries. Oh, thank you, thank you. We can't really do can't it. Can't fit too many, huh? 
Yeah. That's all right. Only two. Okay, so it looks like we've got all our fruit in there. It's what in comes that. next? Whipped cream. Whipped cream. Here, let's put it over here so you can reach it. Okay, you're going to put two big dollops right at the end. And what is the Cool Whip supposed to be? It's supposed to be the clouds. The clouds. Yeah, get in there, girl. Get it. Ah! <laughs> it's okay. Gotta shake it off. Here. Yeah. Shake it like that. Oh, good job. Okay, you wanna do the other side? Get a big old scoop. That's it. It goes on the other side. Shake it. All right. Nice. <laughs> do you wanna taste it? Let's show them first before we taste. You see our rainbow? Okay, what are you gonna have first? I'm gonna have an apple. You're gonna have an apple? I'm gonna have a blueberry. <laughs> Yum. Mm -hmm. All right, have fun making your rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad you could be with us for camp meeting today, for Carolina camp meeting for kids. And as we close, let's bow our heads and pray to Jesus again one more time. Dear Jesus, we want to come to you today and ask you to help us to love you first. Help us to want to love our neighbor. Help us to be friends with others. Help us to cheer those who are sad and feed the hungry and help the poor. Help us to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with you. We want to do what's right. So please, dear Jesus, today we want to say yes to you. We want you to be in our hearts. We want to do your will. Please be with us as we go from this place and help us to do your will. We love you, Jesus. Thank you. Amen. So kids, we'll look forward to another time. But in the meantime, don't forget, let's do God's will. All right? Bye.